You know, when I mean old buddies, I mean like the ghetto friends, like the kids I used to hang out with in fucking middle school. Mm-hmm. And we went to a Celtics game. <laughs> I don't even like the fucking Celtics. <laughs> you know what I mean? But but we were yeah. like, it's gonna be cool. Let's go to a fucking Celtics game. We went to Celtics the fucking right now. yeah. We went to the Celtics game and the arena wasn't like an arena. It's There's funny that I'm wearing these too, because I also Boston. am not a Celtics fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's up, motherfuckers? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Dudes on a Couch. My name is Matt. My socks have two cans on them. <clears throat> you want to go ahead, Dylan, and introduce yourself? I think you just did. <laughs> <laughs> and your boy Alex here, Obvi. And we are Dudes on a Couch. Don't ever say that again. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think <laughs> that. I don't think we should put that in. We, we are Dudes on a Couch. Like, yeah. we're dudes on the couch. Yeah. Dude, if we're superheroes, we'd be like, dudes, go! <laughs> <laughs> dudes, unite. Our superpowers is just turning people into couches so we can sit on them. <laughs> we just chillax on them for a little bit. That'd be pretty sick. This can has Sonic the Hedgehog on it. What do you think about that? Is that G Fuel in a can? Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude, it's a thing that... Yo, wow. G Fuel... carbonated, though. G Fuel, That's you crazy. should sponsor us. <laughs> <coughs> True. Yeah, I'll drink G Fuel. I already drink G Fuel like every day. I'll fucking dry scoop it through my nose if you guys sponsor us. Snort it. I'll I did that once but at work. Yeah, you telling me. You know, did we talk about that on the podcast? We though? did. I'm yeah. pretty sure. Yeah, I think so. I will take G Fuel in the anus. <coughs> cool, man. In the anus? Yep. I like Can't that say scene the other word. in that episode of Futurama YouTube. where like the smelly ball of trash is coming towards Earth. Mm-hmm. And Fry's like, ooh, let me smell your anus. And he's like, oh. They actually changed the name of that so that you couldn't make that joke anymore. <laughs> and he's like, well, why did they rename it? He goes, your rectum. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Fantastic. Do you guys have dreams? Oh, yeah. And I don't mean like goals and aspirations, but do you guys dream when you sleep? Yeah, I'm pretty yeah, yeah. Into, We're all, me and Alex are like pretty into dreaming. I'm oh, Travis really into dreaming. lucid dreaming. I could talk about that for the whole podcast. So, the reason I bring that up is uh, back in my ghetto days, when I was doing all types of crazy shit. Back in fucking Westbrook. Yeah, I didn't have any fucking dreams. I just didn't dream at all. You fucking drink too much? I did the other thing too much. Yeah. And I think it it had something to do with that. Because now now that I've been like... You know, sober for a while. I'm having the craziest fucking yeah. dreams. Yeah, yeah. Well, weed's a uh, fucking with me. It's an REM suppressant, so, so it prevents you from having REM sleep. So last night, dude, I had this fucking crazy dream where I was hanging out with a bunch of old buddies from Westbrook. You know, when I mean old buddies, I mean like the ghetto friends, like the kids I used to hang out with in fucking middle school. Mm-hmm. And we went to a Celtics game. <laughs> I don't even like the fucking Celtics. <laughs> you know what I mean? But but we were yeah. like. It's gonna be cool. It's gonna be a fucking Celtics game. We went to the fucking right now. yeah. We went to the Celtics game and the arena wasn't like an arena. It's There's funny that I'm wearing these too, because I also Boston. am not a Celtics fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's ironic. So we went to this fucking arena and it was like it was like the Civic Center when they were doing Circus Hole. There's fucking <laughs> curtains in front of us. And, like, the seats were all weird. Like, I remember a part of the dream where we, we got seats that we thought were good. And then we saw people start folding out the bleachers. Like, they were like, boosh! And there's more seats closer up. We're all, like, running over. And a part of my dream, I dropped my phone running to these bleachers, and it fucking cracked. And then I wake up this morning, and I'm like, oh, my fucking God. I'm going to just spend $80 for another phone. Rep- oh. Oh, it's not... Okay, fuck. All right, that was a fucked up dream. <laughs> and I've been having those for like two fucking weeks now, and it's like Where you just break your dude. bone or just crazy. Dude? Yeah, dude. But like almost every single dream I have, my phone gets cracked somehow, and it's like the weirdest cracks too. Like it's not like you know the like the one or two lines. Yeah. It's like lightning bolts, motherfucker. <laughs> it looks like I shattered my shit. Yeah. <laughs> Fucks with me, dog. Um, Where's mine at? Where's my dreams mine? are also pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. So the couch ate it. Oh no, you're sitting on it. Yeah, it was, it's like that, but on the corner, and it always goes down for yeah. some fucking reason. That's a good shot of my uh, my butt for you guys. <laughs> so my dreams are pretty crazy. Um, <laughs> do you know what lucid dreams are? Yeah. When I mean, you can like become act or control yeah, the dream. Yeah. Well, it's just that you, it's just that you know yeah. you're dreaming. You can't always control. Yeah, you just but. know. Um, <clears throat> well, I found out for me 
the best way to like find out if I'm dreaming is use a microwave. And if the microwave turns on while it's open, I'm like, ha, oh, I'm dreaming. <laughs> And it works every time. Oh, so you're like red ball? Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> um, but I got this farm I go to. I got a farm. And like it's always the same. There's always the same people there. Mm -hmm. And it's this big ass farm. The inside though of the farm, like it's this big farmhouse. And it's always different on the inside. Always. But the outside, always the same. That's fucking crazy. It's crazy. Um, so that's where, like, as soon as I realize I'm dreaming, I'm just like, oh, I'll text, I'll test the microwave. That's where, like, I fuck up, is because, like, I don't realize it's a dream until I wake up and I smoke a cigarette. Yeah. Because, like, I fucking had this dream where I was running from the cops. <laughs> like, I was, I was going, like, 60 down the road and, like, a 35, and then I see blue lights, and I'm like, Sonata time! And I'm fucking, like, <laughs> matting it to the floor, going around these corners and shit. Something my Sonata will never do. Yeah. And, like, I, I get to my house, and I'm, like, running inside and shit, and then I'll wake up in the morning, I'm, like, peeping out the fucking window. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like, like yo, did warrant? I actually just yeah, run from the cops? Yeah, fucking worn out for my arrest. It's the weirdest uh, fucking thing, dude. Yeah. Dreams do suck. You, so do you know what false awakenings are? No. Those suck. When you think you wake up, but you're still dreaming? You're still dreaming? That's fucked. Yeah. So... Don't say that. I'm gonna fucking get him now. False <laughs> awakenings are actually the most vivid type of dream you can have because it's so close to the environment your body's actually in. I feel like so I'll never know. have that because my environment changes so often. Yeah. I don't I feel like I have them more often when I'm not home. You know what I mean? Like, if I, like, am in a hotel or something, I'll, like, wake up. Yeah. And then, like, realize that I'm still in my room or something. I'm like, wait a second. I'm at a hotel. And yeah. I just wake up. <laughs> um, I've been having them a lot lately where I just wake up. But, like, I'll wake up and my room's just bigger. <laughs> like, my room's just, like, way bigger, but I don't question it. <laughs> like, I'm just like, yeah, time to start the day. When I get them, it's, like, identical to my room. But I remember the last few that I've gotten have, like, basically been, like, the same. Where, like, it, like, is really close to my actual mm -hmm. room. Like, I don't even think about it. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, I guess I'm awake. And I try to get up, and I just feel, like, really weak. And I just, like, like everything, like, like my vision gets blurry, and I, like, am woozy, and I, like, fall over. Dude, I have That's that, freaky. too. I don't like that. It freaks yeah. me the fuck I, out. What happens for me, I'm always like, oh, my God, what the fuck is yeah, wrong I'm with dying. me? dying. Yeah. It happens to me, like, I remember it used to happen when I, we were in school, and, like, if I was getting ready to go to school, but then, like, I was, like, sick or something. Mm -hmm. And then, like, I went back to bed. Like, that, that's when I would always, I would get up to go pee and then like I'd get to my bedroom door and like that's when I would get too weak I'd be like too weak to turn the doorknob and it would freak me <laughs> out and then like you know when like your hand falls asleep I'd get that in the tip of my fingers but it would go up my arm and just consume my whole body and then I'd just wake up that's fucked up and usually when that yeah. started happening that's like like my first sign I'm like alright this is probably a dream cause I've, this has happened like six times by now you know <laughs> so I'm like this is probably a dream but I can't do anything about it still. It just still takes my body and I wake up. Yeah. So I had army drill last weekend, guys. How was that? So I'm not supposed to talk about it too much in the detail because sensitive information, whatever the fuck. But I had to wake up at 5 o'clock in the fucking morning and drive to the meeting point in which I had to be there at like 6.30. And I'm in Waterboro, and that's like, that's not fucking cool. And I thought... Like, when we get to the fucking area where we're doing our training, I could spend the night there and then wake up and go right back to training. It's not like that. You have to you drive, drive every day. <laughs> and then come back. And we did something called uh, FTX, or Field Training Exercise. And we went to this field in, in fucking who knows where. I, I can't say where it is. And we're doing, like, this fucking, like, real-life scenario type thing where, like, we're fighting Taliban in the fucking woods. And we call them Op 4 because there's, like, some Muslim kids that go to the fucking... Anyways, so we have these fucking paintball guns and we're walking through the fucking woods. And all the other kids that have been to the training for a while now have their uniforms and mm -hmm. shit and they fit the part. I'm wearing essentially this outfit with some fucking suspenders, different... Like, I think I just had a regular black t-shirt on. And I'm just, like, walking around with this fucking paintball gun, looking back and forth, fucking, like, clearing a sector. We did, like, formations and shit. Yeah. Dude, 
I don't think I'm war ready, but in this scenario, I didn't have a single fucking drop of pain on me, and I took out two of them fuckers. Nice. So I was feeling so stoked about myself. <laughs> so stoked up until the point where we get to the part where we turn in our weapons, and I'm walking up, and the one of the instructors is going around. This guy is scary as fuck, by the way. I'll tell you some more about this guy. He's like six foot something, big black dude. You can tell he's seen war, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And he comes up, he's like, if you guys don't have barrel plugs for the paintball guns, come up to me right now and get them. And I'm like, I'm holding my gun. I've wasted all my ammo on the fucking kids I smoked. I don't have any ammo. It's on safety. And without thinking, I just, like, aim it up to him to have him put the plug in the barrel. And he fucking, like, puts it down to the ground, fucking looks at me. He goes, you want to fucking die? Huh, motherfucker, you want to fucking die? And I'm like, no, Staff Sergeant, I don't want to die. It was an honest mistake. I wasn't thinking, Staff Sergeant. And he just, like, sort of looked at me like if we were in fucking boot camp, he would have socked me oh, in my yeah. shit. <laughs> and he just sort of handed me the fucking plug and told me to fall out. And, like, that made me feel so fucking stupid. <laughs> I haven't stopped thinking about it since. Yeah. Like, if I did that with a real gun, dude... Because you just never been yelled at, like... Well, like, I, but I got yelled at... Yeah multiple times while I was there, but it wasn't for being dumb, it was yeah. because we're a recruit. Yeah. And yeah. so when this fucking giant dude who has <laughs> absolutely killed people is staring at me, asking me if I want to fucking die, it made me, like, rethink, like, I don't want to die, I guess. <laughs> you know, I never thought about it. You know, <laughs> but you know I've never now, really thought about it, but now that you yeah, say it, now it does that you sound kind of shitty. Up, dying doesn't sound like the fucking Seems move. like you could do that to me. <laughs> Yo, for sure, dude. This guy, alright. So most of the, the recruiters, all the staff sergeant there is are recruiters for the most yeah. part, I believe. And uh, they're pretty nice with us because they just want us to stick around. And yeah, they want you to be in the army. And this guy, I think he's a recruiter, I'm not quite sure. He's just this big, tough... Imagine the real-life equivalent to fucking Sergeant Major Johnson from Halo. <laughs> like, that fucking black dude is like, bro, oh my fucking god. We're all sitting there waiting to go for our drills. Just fucking hanging out. They call it smoking and joking. We're just sort of fucking chilling. And he comes up and he's like, Are you motherfuckers ready? And he gets us all in the circle and he starts doing this hype speech. He's like, It's violence of action! And he's fucking like moving around. He's like, You don't walk up there like, Huh? Huh? This isn't fucking Rainbow Six. You fucking come up there like, I'm gonna fucking kill you! And we're all like, Yeah, man! Paintball! Like, we're gonna fucking kill somebody. <laughs> He just there's some fucking people in this world that are wired to the point where you could get like an 80 year old fucking grandma war ready just with one fucking speech you know I felt the power of that and I was like that guy's awesome but I don't want to be that guy <laughs> like, I don't Fair. want to have to go through what he had to go through to be that yeah dude yeah. so I spent like one day in the middle of a hot blazing field 90 degree heat with a black t-shirt on running around with a fucking paintball gun just sitting in a fucking classroom the whole next day. And, like, that fuck me, dude. If yeah. I, I would try it so hard not to pass out. <laughs> we had to talk about, like, sexual harassment and military nice. and, and fucking, like, drug use and all this fucking crazy shit. Like, uh, it's okay, like... you can't do meth in the army. Yeah, it's, like, common <laughs> sense to me, but I guess for some other kids, it's just not. Yeah, some people are just idiots. They're, they're just, like, they're like, I didn't know I wasn't allowed to sexually harass people at work. But a apparently... <laughs> since when? They have this new fucking thing in the army, which I think is public. It, it said unclassified, so I feel like I'm allowed to talk about this. <laughs> it's called SHARP. Sexual Harassment... Um, s wait, sexual harassment and assault, um, the R stands for something, and the, the, the P is prevention. And then we're all, like, sitting there for, like, this 45-minute PowerPoint talking about how, like, if you look at somebody, like, if I look at you, like, like, I'm trying to give you the fuck eyes, you can get written up for that. And the thing about the sharp shit is if you get even an investigation on you, it's on your record for 50 fucking years, even if you're found innocent. So, like, I figured out, like, when I go to boot camp, I'm just gonna be looking at my feet the whole time. <laughs> going like this. I ain't yeah. even gonna look up at my battle buddy. He's gonna be, like, asking me questions. I'm like, yeah, man. Sorry. Trying not to look at your dick. Yep. I uh, just, uh, so I heard about sharp and nah. I ain't risking it. No, dude, because <laughs> fuck that shit. I'm just trying to get in and get out, and, like, that sounds ridiculous because I'm in for fucking six years, 
But, like, I'm not going to cause any fucking issues. I'm not going to be the kid who's the reason no, I Let's make smoke. this a quick six years. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? I'm just, I'm just going to put my fucking head down and bust my ass off as much as I fucking can. That's fair. But on the way to the pickup zone, on the second day, I was riding through, I believe, I went through Gorm. And I, I stopped at the... You guys know the Cumberland Farms, right? In, like, the Gorham Town mm-hmm, Center? Mm-hmm. It's, like, the fucking weird gas station. Mm-hmm. It's always open oh, for yeah. some fucking reason. It's 5 o'clock in the morning I go in there. I get an egg cheese ham croissant and a fucking cheeseburger. <laughs> and and it was, like... At an, 5 in the morning? Yeah, dude. It was an Angus fucking, like, bacon cheeseburger. <laughs> and I walk up to the counter. She's like, you want me to heat up that, that breakfast sandwich for you? I'm like, please... And she's like, you want me to cook up that, uh, that cheeseburger too after she hands me the other croissant? And I'm like, I don't want to make her fucking cook me two things in a fucking row. I'm like, no, I'll be good. She's like, okay, you're saving it for later. And I'm like, I guess. Not really. And I get in the car and so I eat this fucking breakfast sandwich which hit the fucking spot, dude. It had me smacking. I was like, Saliv- I'm salivating just thinking about it. It was such a good fucking sandwich. And then I get to the cheeseburger, and it's like in this fucking seal pack, vacuum sealed saran wrap. Nice. It's cold, and I open it, and the bread's tough, and the meat's just not fucking there, and it's like fucking... <laughs> <Should> I <eat? laughs> That is what I'm thinking, but like, I- yeah. I'm trying to be considerate of this fucking... 50 year old woman working behind the counter who's probably sick and At tired. Five in the morning. Yeah, exactly, dude. She just put like those fucking like taquito like breakfast things on the fucking rollers and they're all cooking <laughs> and shit. Otherwise, I would have grabbed four of them fuckers and just <laughs> chomped them down. The taquitos are the best. I've never had them, but they look so fucking good. They look they're like so they're gonna good. make me shit my pants. They definitely will. Speaking of which, dude. Yeah, how did how was your how was your stomach at training? Once you had the breakfast sandwich and burgers. So, th- it was fine up until we got our MREs for yeah. lunch. <laughs> and I learned very fucking quickly that there's a huge difference between a good MRE and a get fucked MRE. <laughs> and I, I didn't know. We, they just had boxes full yeah. of them and I went and grabbed one and fucking get up to the classroom and I open it. I had fucking a cheese tortellini MRE. Do you guys know what a fucking cheese tortellini is? Imagine ravioli, but just cheese in it, <laughs> right? And they gave me these chipotle fucking, like, tortillas. So it's like a regular tortilla, but it's spicy. It's got, like, chili peppers in it. Shit. I saw I had the, the cheese tortellini, the fucking, the tortillas, and a fucking oatmeal cookie, which was the best part about the meal, hands down. Even though it was dry and fucking, you could tell it was just chock full of mm-hmm. protein and fucking grains and shit. That was the best part. So I, they, they came around... And they took the heat packs out of all of our MREs. And they're like, when you guys get deployed, when you guys get shipped out, you're not always going to have the time to fucking cook your fucking MREs. You're not always going to have that luxury. So we're going to teach you now how to eat them while, the way they are. And I'm like, I don't know. Okay. So they're like plucking all the fucking heat packs out. And so I, I just like poured this cold cheese ravioli out on the fucking spicy tortilla and ate it like a fucking taco. <laughs> and that was depressing as <laughs> fuck, dude. The spiciness of the fucking tortilla does not go well with ravioli. And, like, <laughs> it it tasted just like Chef Boy R fucking D. You know, the sweet yeah, sauce yeah. and the fucking... The Probably sweet. is Chef Boy R D. I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> and I'm telling you what, dude, re- fucking Chef Boy R D don't go well on a spicy tortilla. I bet not. I didn't Old. shit for two days. I got fucking blocked up, dude. I, I fucking... Right, dude. I, I got home, fucking sweaty and shit, get out of the shower, and usually my, my methods are when I get home is it's shit, shower, fuck off, right? <laughs> and I'm sitting on the toilet just waiting and waiting. I'm, like, playing fucking... Like, this is my shit time. Why isn't it happening? Yeah, dude, I'm, like, playing 2048 on my phone, just swiping and shit, and I'm, like... <laughs> What the fuck, man? And so I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Maybe I'll just take a shit after a shower. I hop in a steamy shower, get dressed. Not happening. <laughs> it didn't happen until the next afternoon after I got Subway. Which, all right. <laughs> fuck Subway, dude. Dude, we had Subway earlier. That Yeah, that sounds nice. Except this Subway's in fucking Waterboro and bumfuck. And it's always like meth heads that work there. <laughs> like people that just probably shouldn't be employed. And I, I walk in there and I'm like the fuck do I want? I don't really want to spend Hey, that sounds like someone sandwich. I want to start beef with right now. Right? Uh, John at our fucking subway. <laughs> fuck John. Alright, John, you fucking Was he suck. the one there today? Yeah, which I... 
He was the guy who used to always be there at night, and you would come in like 45 minutes before closing, and he'd have all the like, shit put away and then get mad at you when you ordered a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, John. Uh, like, what the dude, fuck? why'd you put it all away before you closed? Well, there were, I think there was a night where Ian went in there like an hour and a half before close, and he had already put everything away. What the fuck? And then he got, got really mad at Ian for ordering a fucking, like, Ian ordered a bunch of shit on his sandwich, <laughs> obviously. It's like, fuck this guy. But he got really pissed about it. And I'm like, dude, like, just don't do that. It was like people working at Little Caesars who would fucking start breaking down all the topping lines at, yeah. like, fucking... Like two hours before we closed. Yeah. I completely forgot like to talk about. It takes like, two minutes. Like, why stop. I was talking about my trip that. to the fucking. So I go to fucking Cumberland Farms. I get my fucking food. Eat cold cheeseburger. <laughs> fucking sucked. And I'm driving into Westford from Gorm. And a fucking. I told you guys about the possum story last time I was on. Mm-hmm. I, I fucking the Sonata just likes murder, dude. Because <laughs> I'm fucking flying down this fucking road, just like listening to Johnny Cash. Hanging out, and a fucking squirrel comes running from this side instead. It's always right? Johnny Cash, huh? Dude, yeah. <laughs> Fuck, you guys have been in my Freaky. car. I'm bumping country. <laughs> I'm fucking flying, and this fucking squirrel comes up. And like the possum where it hesitated and just did a 180, the squirrel didn't know what the fuck to do. He sees me coming, he's like, he looks, he turns around, turns back, looks at the car, turns around again, and runs right under my front right. And, like, I didn't even stop this time, dude. I had somewhere to fucking be. It was early in the morning. I just, like, I felt the crunch and bump. And I felt awful about it, dude. It was like you ate in, a, like, one of the fucking uh, crunch candy bars. <laughs> the fucking wafers and them and shit. Just smoked this thing. Didn't even look at my rear view, dude. I was just singing along to my song. Fucking... Just, whoa. <laughs> yeah. So now the Sonata has two bodies for the front two tires... Now all I need to do is like do some shit burnout, like sideswipe a pig or some stupid <laughs> shit with the rear sideswipe. <laughs> I don't, dude. Just look, there's a pig on that corner. I bet I could drift it. <laughs> like, another thing about Bumper subway that it. fucking pisses me off is you guys ever watch like a varsity football game? Yeah. And you can tell the good kids from the not so good kids because they have the fucking stickers on their helmet. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's some of the kids who are like. Decent. They got like four of them stickers. Like he's got like off. a visor looking scary. And then there's the fucking psychopaths that have like forty on one side, and then like some shit smiley face on the They're other. Just like jumping over people. Yeah, dude, some <laughs> just fucking hit psychopaths. Sticks the fucking like five seven running back Why stickers add more horsepower. The this is how fuck. It works. Does Subway have those fucking golden stars they put on their I fucking know, hats, dude? dude. <laughs> it, fuck off. You fucking make sandwiches, dude. <laughs> like, you really showed that fucking spicy salami. I'd be so boss. mad, dude, if someone was like, here's a gold star, put this on your hat. I'd be like, nope. What the fuck is it for? Um, so Domino's it. had a very similar system where you got pins for every level of training you did. And they put me in a manager program. So, like, three... like. I got, like, three pins right off the bat. What the fuck? And they were like, you have to put this on your hat. And I was like, no, that makes my hat heavy. Fuck that. <laughs> I was like, these are heavy pins. I'm not putting them on my hat. You don't want extra weight just on my head. You should have put you. them on your chest like you were a general. Well, like they got nervous. mad at me. They're like, well, you have to have them on your head so people know how trained you are. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what these pins mean. You think some random guy is going to come in here and be like, oh, shit. He's got That's three pins. Guy. Come Look on that, up here. I look got at that double star yet. pin he's got on his hat. Dude, I want him making me. my pizza. I bought that vaccinated pin, dude, because they were saying that we might have to have them for work. And I was like, well, if we have to have them, I'm not having a stupid yeah, one. So I got like a nice one. one. And I still haven't gotten it. That was like a month ago. Right. I'm worried about the vaccine shit. Because, like, I'm not, like, a fucking conspiracy theory type fucking guy mm-hmm. by any fucking means, dude. I'm, I'm pretty... I have a pretty down-to-earth, realistic view on life. But if the fucking military prohibits me from shipping out when I go to ship out, I'm gonna be fucking pissed. I'm gonna be fucking mad. They're like, well, you can't go. You have to have your fucking COVID bag. No, I think they would just give it to yeah, you and send you out. Tell you to take it. Yeah, right? I just right. show up at the airport, and there's a doctor just fucking shoving them fucking gloves on. Yeah, well, they're not going to, like, <laughs> let you know last minute. They're not going to be like, oh, you can't get on this plane. you got to be vaccinated. Yeah. I fucking hope not. Because, I mean, they a... do that with other vaccines when you go to different countries. Like, it'd probably just be part... It'd That's just be another on a list. thing, too. Like, why the fuck can I not, like, go to fucking... Uh, 
I don't fucking know, Italy without a vaccine. Like, they're not already fucked. You know what I mean? What the fuck am I going to... I'm not going to be patient. I want to add to it. <laughs> fuck them, dude. <laughs> I, I say that, but I'm Italian. You know, <laughs> all right. You guys heard about that new virus sprouting out of China, right? Yeah. What the fuck is that about? So Wait, it's not Why isn't the CIA, like, on their fucking ass, dude? So, it isn't as spreadable as COVID was? Yeah, well, jelly's not as spreadable as peanut butter, but they still <laughs> both go on sandwiches, you know yeah, what the fuck I mean? to be fair, like, like, several, like, coronaviruses have come out of China just because it's such a densely populated area. Like, so this oh. isn't the first one. We just only had one bad one, Yeah, you know? I have a rule where if, like, if I can pee outside of one of my windows, it can't land on somebody. Like, I gotta be that far away from people, right? So if I had to go to fucking China, where if I take a piss out of a window and it fucking hits 40 people, I'm not happy. Yo, so you wanna hear something about China? (laughs) Not really. (laughs) You don't, when you get a hotel, you don't get windows. Nice. (laughs) What is it, so you don't get assassinated? It's pretty tight. Nah, you get, like... See, like, the size of this couch? Yeah. It's, like, a room that size. Fuck that. <laughs> you ever seen those Chinese hotels? Oh, uh, yeah, like, the sleeping ones yeah. where you're just in coffins? Well, I don't Pretty think much. they're all like that. No, but most of them are. <laughs> those are, like, the... Those are ones that people that live in China stay yeah. in. No, nah, those are, like, the Gen Z you know, ones like, where, like, you want to feel quirky. Yeah, because like, yeah, I think tech... Like, like, aren't we all, like... We'd be rich as fuck if we went to China, right? N- yes, I don't no. think you'd be rich as fuck, but like you'd have money. Yeah. Like you'd have more money than you have here. If you went to Laos, you'd be fucking rich as fuck, dude. For one dollar here, it equivalents to like seven thousand there. Can you fucking believe that? One let one USD translates to when I did the research, like seven thousand three hundred Lettonian kips. Well, like I think so. Yeah, but is a Latonian kip like a cent? You know what I mean? Like Yeah, because there is country... Like, China is China. like that. Like, they go by yen. Like, yeah. a million yen isn't that much money. Like, a lot of people there are millionaires. But just yen's just not worth that much. So, so it doesn't matter. Uh, that's weird. So you hear about actually, Chinese... I don't know how much What would that be? Like, having, like, a million pennies? You hear about Chinese millionaires. Well, when they're talking about Chinese millionaires, though, they're probably referring to them in respect to U.S. dollars. That's what I was about to ask. Because, like, you hear about, like, that fucking... Okay, dude. People in China just go missing. And I feel like I've mentioned that on the fucking podcast. But there's a fucking guy. He was, like... You know that fucking Chinese dude that Elon Musk was on the stage with? Who just like didn't understand shit and Elon was like making fun the of him. The guy that runs Alibaba. Um, I think so. Yeah, I think so. He just went missing. He just disappeared. He's just gone now. Yeah, I mean he's rich as fuck. If he wants to disappear, I'm sure. But that's he not it. I feel like the, what happens is because it's not just him. It's multiple other Chinese billionaires that like say something about the government so or like are given influence and they just dis a fucking peer. One yen is sixteen cents. Um, so if you had one dollar, that's a lot of money. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, yeah. Let's see. You guys know how like, I feel about China. <laughs> Fuck China. One dollar is 6.4 yen. Weird. China's, like, pretty fucked, but... Lately, I don't know. A lot of the shit that they're saying about China is, like, a load of shit. Yeah. And they're literally doing it just to, like, basically garner our consent to go to war with China. Well, I'll tell you what, dude. I've given them my fucking consent since, like, day one, motherfucker. I look at that fucking place. Fucking, what is it? We would lose. Nah. Nah. We went to war with China. China has much more powerful allies than we do. Yes and no. You're forgetting the, the power of democracy. Yeah, that's a load of shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, hear me out, right? It would take China, like, 20 fucking years to invade us and occupy us, just based on our land mass alone. And you also Yeah, I don't think a land invasion well, would ever happen. Yeah, they're they're more but, worried about, like, cyber attacks. Yeah. I think it would be more like a Cold War, you know, to We're be We're already honest, in a Cold War What are they going to do, hack yeah. my Instagram and get my nudies? No, they basically... So, have you ever heard of a fire sale? 
the fuck is that? You've never watched Die Hard? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Call of Duty Zombies, so dude. I'm finna fire hit that sale. box. Fire sale is when another, or someone hacks the U.S. like mainframe. Uh-huh. Like, they have control of red lights. They basically just have control of everything. Yeah, if you so they would hack like everything. People basically. like they've had they've done it before, where like they set off alarms inside government buildings. Mm-hmm. They would just be able to do that anywhere. Hmm. They would be able to control any technology that's connected to the internet. That would be a fun world to live in, because you're just sitting at fucking work and you're like the alarms going off and it's just ignored. It's China. <laughs> <laughs> you just keep going about your fucking. Just all right, guys. There's no real fire. I um, feel like that's definitely a fight we would lose. Um, th- th- what would happen, there would just be a lot of casualties due to, like, just traffic. Right. You get two green lights, two, <laughs> everyone goes through a green light, you got a lot of car accidents. Probably, though. You have a lot of mayhem, because everyone's be going to the I'd more worried about, I mean, they could, like, really fuck our economy. Dude. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Not like it's already, we've already been through fucked economies. 2008 stock market crash. Yeah, this it would be nothing like the that. Great Depression. Yeah, if there was a fire sale, like it would just be. It would I be, feel we'd like probably though, be fucked. if yeah. they went to that extreme, I think that at that point there would be at war with like most of the Western Hemisphere. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like yeah, but like who else over here is like got the shit? You know. Well, yeah, because Canada. Well, I'm just saying that that would probably like, start World War Three. Not fucking. Like, yeah, it would like, definitely start a World War Three. If they fucking that Chile is not gonna be like, all right, boys, we're fucking going to war, yeah. buddy. Well, we that's what's you. hilarious though is like Canada's mm-hmm. too busy sucking syrup out of trees, and Mexico can't even occupy their own fucking land. <laughs> they can't even like the cartel owns half of that shit. Yeah. So it would just be us versus a bunch of fucking Chinese. We're, so we'd have assholes. like the UK would help us. Probably. I mean, probably. probably. Well, so if China attacked first, we'll say go by that case. China attacks first with a fire sale. Just fuck up our, our power grid. I think... It would probably take us, like, months to even, like, just confirm yeah. that it's them. Well, yeah. You know but I, mean? I feel like... Unless they claim down. the attack. Life would be fucking different in that situation, though. Like, these big companies, like, <clears throat> like let's say Subway, for example, right? Fire sale hits, they're butt-fucking us and all of our fucking shit or whatever they would understand that money doesn't mean fuck all right now because we're in fucking war. Here's some free sandwiches. I don't think that that would ever happen. You yeah. know? No. no. If this country think... cares significantly so, more about money than anything a lot, else. A lot of what happens They're not just going to hand shit out for free. I mean, think the... about what they do with leftovers at the end of every night. They just yeah. fucking throw them away. Well, they have to. So during World Why? War II... Because, like, it's a... Like, it's food safety laws. Yeah, like... Yeah, but it's not real. Yeah, no. It's not real. Yeah. So, it's made up. They tell you that just because they don't want people to have it so for free. The reason being why they can't just give it away for free without it being claimed as a donation. So you'd have to donate it. It has to go through a food safety check process. And then, so say you just gave it to someone for free without claiming the donation. They get sick. And they get sick. Now they can sue you no matter what. They even if they I mean, do- yeah. Yeah, but if they, even if they don't get sick from the donut you gave them they can still sue you. So it's really just a way for companies to cover their ass in that situation so they don't get sued because there is people that out there that will try to do that, but it just ruins it forever. I should have filed a lawsuit on Hannaford when they gave me food poisoning. <laughs> yeah. Should have. I ate one of them rotisserie chickens, and I fucking I was peeing out of my asshole for fucking three days after that. I don't know, man. I don't think I could afford a lawsuit even if I was the one getting the money. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, what <laughs> if, know, like, if they went and... They're like, oh, dude, this guy fucking digs through our fucking dumpster every night yeah. and gave it to him. You think that guy's going to go fucking sue you if he gets sick? Probably not. Because that, that motherfucker can't pay for a lawyer. He yeah. can't pay for a donut. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this is just... He, like, it's silly. <laughs> yeah. And, but I feel like on that point, it's not like... It wouldn't fall on Subway or, or Duncan or whatever the fuck because he went into the dumpsters and ate out of them. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, but like if they gave it to him instead of having him fucking dig through the dumpster. Like, they know that this dude's legit, like, dying on the streets. I'm sure there's local businesses that do that. And yeah, definitely. Fuck. Like, I'm sure the Holy Donut doesn't just... Well, they can't even fucking keep the donuts till the end of the day. They sell out. But, like, any, like, place, like, local place probably has a bob or a gym that comes by at night and picks yeah. up the leftovers for sure. Realistically, all it takes is just to know how to run a business and don't make too much product. Like, 
hearing about all this shit with war though really makes me want to live off like a self-sustaining area like get my own fucking um Motherfucker. like solar panels and oh, shit sorry. start growing vegetables and just like Yo. fucking living off of the goddamn grid my question becomes how how would China's economy be impacted with a war with us since our economies are so tightly linked? Yeah, I mean we owe them like trillions of dollars. Well, like, yeah, the the debt is weird, and they also like we're like a big like buyer of like a lot of their industry's products. Right. So like, well that's what that's why I'm like, curious. If, I, so would that they, even be like a worthwhile? It would fight negatively affect I'm their I don't economy. Think they would, like. But I think China just really wants to be the head of the table. Yeah. And that's what they're pushing for. China number one. Yeah. I Because China used to be, like, this big superpower. Well, they still are. They still are, but I feel like... Not to the extent that they think they are. Yeah, compared to the U.S. I mean, the U.S. has gotten to a point where their army is literally bigger than most armies combined. Yeah, we could take, like years away from like funding our military and still be the largest Mm -hmm. and like the most equipped I think that's badass though I think it's too much I I think I think there's a lot more issues that need to be taken care of here first I think there is like this is a big argument that a lot of people say is like well if you don't fund the army who's gonna protect you and I think there is a certain line where, like, yeah, we do need to fund the army and need to spend money on that. But there's also a point where, like, all right, we're Not spending billions of dollars on buying the same three planes every two years and then scrapping those planes well, and dude, just leaving them. They give them so much money that the Department of Justice has been caught, like, more than once trying to fudge all their reports so that people can't see how much money they waste on prototype planes that don't fucking work. Yeah. Like, it's billions and billions of dollars every year that they use on prototype planes. And they're like, this fucking thing don't even work. Yeah. And they fucking throw it away. Yeah. I'm like, oops. And then they just fudge the numbers. And I understand that development because it needs to happen still. They're doing it the wrong way. Yeah, exactly. They and shouldn't be spending we, billions I mean, think about of how dollars. fucking bad shit is, like, internally in this country. Yeah. Infrastructure, medicine, education, all of it's fucked. Yeah. And it's because even as... Like last year, the largest military budget in human civilization was passed. Yeah. And it was like $880 billion. That's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. That's dumb as fuck. It is. Because, like, you take $2 billion of that, buy some lunches. Guess what? You fed a bunch of people, now you have way more the people price happy of one in your economy. Fucking, whatever, I don't even know what they're called. F 35s, I think. The really fucking big fuckers. <laughs> that they they make like twelve of them a year, um, one of those is enough to feed every fucking kid in the country. Every kid could have school lunch for free. That's enough. But they're like, fuck, dude, we need another fucking plane. <laughs> like, fuck you. No, That's you don't. the American spirit. Dog. It's so dumb. Think about it, right? Let's just, starve our got, fucking children of you just got nutrition and education to have thousand dollars given to you, right? And th- this is a flaw in the American way. You get $35,000 just handed to you for no fucking reason, right? Are you going to go to the homeless shelter and pay for some fucking dinners? Are you going to buy a new fucking Camaro? No, because I'm fucked too. That's what I'm saying. The military's not fucked though. It's a bad (laughs) thing. The military's over give Like, they give them too much. If someone walked up to me and they're like, here's $35 billion. I'm like, I don't fucking know what to do with that. Yeah. I'm going to go do stupid shit with it. Literally. Like, like there's a there's a point where money, though, becomes pointless. Yeah. It's just like, like a status. It's clout, dude. Amongst yeah. billionaires. It's clout. Yeah. 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 Literally, dude. <laughs> literally, like, literally, like, billionaires are like, yeah, you have $36 billion. I have 38 motherfucker. And they're like, well, what can you buy that I can't? And they're like, I don't know. We can all buy all the things. <laughs> <laughs> like... Like technically, I could buy you. That's uh, that's about what it. What do you think like, about like a red cent tax? A red. I don't want to get too political here, but a red so, cent tax. Yeah, where they like decide like just to make the numbers easy, like a million dollars. You can't make more than a million dollars. Everything past that gets taxed away. So, I've heard that like a similar idea, just at a billion. Yeah, I think 
I think a billion's a good cutoff. I don't even know. I think like a hundred million, dude. Like a hundred million's it. People yeah, would find ways there's around no that reason easily, to have bro. more than a hundred yeah, million dollars. There, there would be ways around because if you have that much fucking money, then you could just classify it as a business and say that you can't tax that because I'm in a business well, development. Well, I would be yeah. in support of closing a loophole like that. Yeah. Yeah, but you they got good lawyers, dog. Well, it doesn't matter if we change the policies. I don't give a fuck what the lawyer's gonna say. If that's the law, that's the law. Hey, fuck you, lawyer. Fucking yeah. Joe Borenstein, suck one. I just know that there there's way <laughs> too many fucking loopholes that these dicks use to hoard like all the Like Jeff money. Bezos it's donating It's fucking ridiculous 70. that like six people in this country have like 93% of the wealth. That's mm. fucked up. Jeff Anyone Bezos. Anyone who thinks that's not fucked up is an idiot. Jeff Bezos that's dumb. in the middle of 2020 donated... Seventy million dollars to his wife. Yep, donated. So guess <laughs> yep. what? It's not, not tax. taxable. Nice. But if I was to like donate, or if I was to like give someone my like money, like the same percentage of that, yeah. fucking yeah, yeah, I would be taxed on that. It's fucking stupid. But because he donated it, he was just like, yeah, now I can get charged less on taxes. And still have my seventy million dollars well, and write it off it's on my fucked, taxes. Dude, it's it's fucked to watch thing, these people do shit like that while I'm like, dude, I can't even like move out of my mom's house. Yeah, like it, the system is set up for me to just be fucked. Well, here's so the, that you can keep that's, doing that. That's the fucking thing, though. Is we're all everybody. The dudes on the couch were consumers, and we fucking buy shit from billion dollar fucking companies almost every day. If we all just went self-sustaining and started building our own fucking ways of life, they can't fucking do shit about that. And I feel like that's the biggest problem in America is everyone buys fucking everything. I bet you if you go into, like, a rural fishing town in fucking China, they're not going to McDonald's, motherfucker. They're fishing. Yeah. They're fucking... They're, they're living yeah, off of what but they got. Th- another part of the problem with that is that it's cheaper. I'm broke. I can go eat a fucking McChicken for a dollar. <laughs> but like an app, a bag of apples is like twelve bucks. Yeah. Fuck, am I gonna do? Not buy apples? I'm no, you go buy a fucking McChicken. Well, that's the thing is you don't you don't buy in general. You you fucking you you fucking you buy one apple and you cut the seeds out of it and you plant them all. And you they would all die grows. if I if I was. Well, yeah, because I was fucking. And you have to wait like but, seven years but, for the apple tree to grow. Well, it could go for anything. Like tomato plants grow pretty yeah. fast. Yeah, you can eat a tomato like an apple. And we got a few of those in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> But you just fucking, uh, <laughs> you quite literally just try to ease off slowly from buying shit. Yeah. Like, fuck going to the fucking mall and getting new clothes and trying to look fucking fresh. Go to fucking Goodwill, spend a quarter of it, and only wear, like, two t-shirts fucking for the rest of your life, dude. That's what they used to do in fucking, um, the colonial days. They used to have one or hey, two let's shirts. let's go to Goodwill after this. That Good, sounds sick. Goodwill? Yeah. You can find some cool shit there sometimes. It's true. That's the problem is you guys are thinking about the cool shit. We gotta think of like, I'm gonna wear this fucking t-shirt if I, if all week. I'm talking all about week Goodwill. I'm, wearing this I'm gonna shirt. spend like three bucks. If all I'm spending three bucks, it's gotta look all right. All week. <laughs> I don't I'm have. Fucking, I don't know how much money you think problem. I have. Problem. Yo yo, can I say something real quick? Um, I've no, been I thinking about like this, shit. and like for for the record, I don't shoplift. <laughs> I don't shoplift, but. Dude, if you steal from Goodwill, literally their entire supply is donated anyway. It's like free to them. So yeah. it's fine so like, to steal from Goodwill. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would argue that it's fine to steal from like Walmart. Yeah, me too. I don't yeah, give a fuck it. about Walmart. Yeah, We're not promoting shoplifting. I am. But do I don't know thing. if I'm legally allowed to say that, actually. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. We're not promoting We're gaslighting a shoplifting crisis. All Chris, you might have to is, cut some things up. If you were to walk into an establishment of great status and wealth and maybe throw some toothpaste into your purse and walk out, ah! Yeah, it's not hurting I, I don't them. see any, any damage done, no. you know? It didn't affect them. But that's the They're issue. They're not going to know. Is I feel like most people who like go to a fucking store and steal shit... Like, like, they get a fucking granola bar. You know what I mean? Or they steal a pack of fucking gum. And yeah. fuck off. Like, steal something that's going to last you. Don't steal. <laughs> Just st- s- steal shit you need. Yeah. Like, if if that's the position that you're in, yeah. I, I, I like see if somebody, like, like it 
fucking really pisses me off how many like single moms get arrested every year because they're like stealing like the I think the most popular Best item milk. to be stolen is like sure. baby formula yeah. and diapers mm. and shit like that. Those people should not be going to fucking jail for Here's that. the other side of the coin, though, is I fucking... Well, it's not, because it's not, like, a single mom in the situation, but I went to uh, the Dollar Tree in South Portland one night with my girl, and we only stopped there because she needed to use the restroom. And I'm sitting outside, and this is when I was driving that black Ford Ranger, and I'm, I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and then I hear, Get the fuck out of my fucking store! And essentially the rundown of it is there's this homeless lady who went into the Dollar Tree to try to steal socks. Right, because her feet are cold, it's fucking wintertime, she wanted new fucking socks, and she doesn't have the money to fucking buy them. And this 50-year-old woman fucking screaming at her says, I have to work here to fucking help raise my five fucking kids, and I have to fucking pay for them and work 50 hours a week. Why in the fuck should you come in here and fucking steal some shit when you can get a fucking job and start working? So the problem is that you're, like, if you're homeless and you don't have, like, an actual residence, they're not going to fucking hire you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Once I'm you're saying. in that position where you literally don't even have like a home address to list, you're significantly less like they're like, you oh, you don't have a home, so you probably are unbathed. You're gross. I don't want you. You can't get an apartment. You can't like put in a reservation for like to try to get an apartment without a home address. Here's the the other side of that too is like most people who are in them circumstances, it's not very circumstantial if you don't have like a a friend or somebody in your family that's willing to just like lie and say yeah you live there and get you in that position chances are you burnt a lot of fucking bridges and you deserve what was coming to you you did some (laughs) fucked up shit I think that that, like like a lot of people like I don't want to say his name he's a famous guy around here everyone knows who he is I haven't seen him in a really long time though. I'm, a, I'm upset um, I feel like something might have happened to him um last I knew he went to a housing facility okay in Naples alright well last as long as I he's, knew he's that was right. like during the winter like, but I don't know I, I was kind of like when that. I was 17 and he was around a lot like I was definitely kind of a dick to him cause I it's like this guy smells bad and I don't want to talk to him but I definitely like I understand it more yeah. now yeah. It's like some of those people just like for that guy. Like, I think it's his mom just died, and he just snapped. went crazy. He's, he yeah. just snapped. The guy, his so his family actually had like a business, and like was pretty wealthy, and like he had money, and still to this day has a large portion of money sitting in a bank account that no one can touch, um, because it's on his name. They just can't touch it. Mm. Um, but he's just like it when his mother died. He went to the point where he just can't think straight. Yeah. So if like someone tries to tell him he has this bank account, he's just like that doesn't make sense. No, I don't. But that that's a that's another thing is he has a, a mental fucking illness and he yeah. wouldn't want somebody. Well, to a lot of them like do. But so, yeah. the way that this country's set up, like me, I'm fucked. I could really use some kind of therapy, and I literally just can't pay for it. Uh-huh. Like, it's not an option. Yeah. My insurance won't cover it because I have free public insurance that... Like, when I got my eyes checked last, and like, alright, these are the glasses you can pick from, I had like seven options and four of them were pink. I'm like, alright, well, I'm down to three, and Ian has those ones, I'm down to two. <laughs> like, it fucking sucks. Yeah. The system is set up for poor people to just get fucked. Yeah. nothing else and it's just so that they can keep and it's really all one cycle of just billionaires paying in to fucking politicians to keep us fucked so they can get richer and keep them in power and they just pay each other mm-hmm. and that's all the cycle is and it fucking is dumb as fuck and it yeah. sucks Really? Yep. Uni- uh, I think also there's like healthcare, free healthcare for homelessness. Solid. There's like layers to it too. There's like level one homeless where you're like sleeping in your car, or like couch surfing and shit. And there's like level two homeless where you're like literally just have nowhere to go, and you're like, ah, I don't fucking know what to do. So you like buy a fucking tent. And then there's like level three where you just there's nothing left, and you're like literally just sleeping on like a park bench with fucking wet socks and maybe a dime or two in your pocket no one to help you and there's nothing like the system is set up so once you're in that position you're done 
There's an, almost nothing you can do. I feel like, as Matt said, universal health care would solve a lot of that because most of the people who are, like, in level three homelessness, like you were saying, have mental illnesses to the mm-hmm. max. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, well, think about illness, how stressful that situation addiction. is. And yeah. that's why yeah. these people end up so fucked is because they're under such a heavy amount of stress that like, we can't even... Like, you can't imagine it unless you're there. Yeah. And it's just like, I don't have food. I don't have shelter. I don't have friends. I don't have family. I have no money. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Like, there's literally like, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die on the street. And you're thinking about it all day, every day. And then there's this pro- like underlying problem just like people going to the streets and then becoming alcoholic or drug users... Because well, that's the, their, that's yeah, it's the their only, escape. yeah, exactly. It's, it's their the escape only from thing to make them not think about it. Yeah. And so it's like a problem where just, fuck it, if this guy had a house, why, he probably wouldn't drink. Like, and I think one of the things that we need to focus on, and it's like an infrastructure thing, and it's building actually affordable housing. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are fucking against it. Yeah. I'm like, fuck you. Yeah, just Stop like, building, like, like, they're always building shit in LA, but guess what? It's fucking luxury condos. Yeah. Well, People on Skid Row sit and have to shit and piss all over themselves. It's like, dude, just put a to go. Just, like make a room, make like a, a bathroom on the side. That's good enough. Yeah, like here's That's the better thing. better than nothing. People talk about it like they're afraid that that would like lower the housing market. But if even if the prices of houses goes down. That's a good thing. As a real estate company, that's good. You should be selling more, more houses. houses. Yeah, and then you have more people in houses that are secure and able to spend more money and stimulates the economy. So, mm-hmm. on the universal healthcare topic, mm-hmm. let's say you're in that level three homelessness where you got nothing, nowhere to go. There's only like two real ways out of that. You're either a normal fucking person like the majority of us on this couch are. I'm not so sure about you, Travis. I'm pretty <laughs> fucked. I think so, we're all fucked. So I'm a bad fucked. example, yeah, there's, buddy. There's, there's two options where, like... Dude, look at how I'm fucking dressed right now. <laughs> <laughs> my socks don't match. My fucking clothes are fucked. Actually, this sweater's kind of fucking nice, but, it, you know, it's my boy's line, so, of course, I picked it up. All right. You know? So... But you have, I'm pretty You fucked. have two real options. So, like, if you're a serious drug user and you're doing all this shit you go seek help with this universal health care. And that's that's one way to get out. The second thing is, is you're a decent person. There isn't really much wrong with you upstairs other than your fucking circumstances and your situation. You build connections. You talk to people. You try, like, this fucking guy at the laundromat says he's willing to help me out and wash my clothes. This fucking person over here says they're willing to let me come in the house and bathe. And you, you because you're working and people see that and you're a good fucking person, you work your way out of that. And that's, like, the only two options that I see. And the problem is, is the people who are like us, who can, like, build connections and, and get themselves out of that situation, do, for the majority and the, the most part. But it's the people who, like, are fucked up here and who walk up to you like, can I wash my stuff at your house? <laughs> no, you fucking can't. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? And yeah. if they had that option of universal health care where they could get the help they fucking need and the help that they fucking, like, absolutely deserve, they're going through so much fucking shit... We would homelessness would fucking drop significantly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really, what there should be, because like, even if like, let's say you're in a situation right where you don't have like really any family to begin with, right, mm-hmm. and you have like a house per se, right, but then like your spouse dies, right, you can't afford the house, you're in an extreme amount of debt, now you're homeless, right? Maybe I'm okay upstairs, you know what I mean? Nah, like, you'd be fucked. You know, you're you're I mean, fucked. Yeah, yeah you're, you're gonna, gonna be stressed. You're gonna be stressed. Down. But like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, maybe I'm like a normal guy. Otherwise, prior to mm-hmm. this, I was all had it good together, and like, maybe I don't have any mental illnesses, and maybe, maybe even if I do have the ability to like get my shit together and work my way out of this, there still should be someone that's like a social worker that I could talk to to be like, listen, my brain's on too many different things right now. I need someone to just help me get it together. Yeah. You, know what I mean? you need like a guidance counselor. You yeah. Know what I mean, like they have in high school, but like they should make someone that actually does their job. Yeah. 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 They yeah. should make caseworkers free. And dude. not just be like, um, you're so, failing all your classes and that's like not very good. <laughs> what do you think about that? What are you going to do? Yeah, I don't need to someone to be like, yeah, you're not paying your bills. Guy. You know what I mean? Holy yeah. shit, dude. Also, this made me think of like the one thing that makes me like really, really annoyed with like conservatives. Yeah, cool. What's up, guy? Hey, All right, well, thanks for coming back to another episode of Dudes on a Couch, and uh, peace out.